real experience isn't gained by running computer simulations and doing paper studies. You get it by actually building and testing things. Our small team at Armadillo Aerospace has built an experience base that may be unique in the entire world. We've made over a hundred rocket-powered test flights using three different propellant combinations, 50 engines spanning a dozen different vehicles, using four different attitude control systems, six generations of electronics boxes, and on and on and on. And our work on this project is just done two days a week with an all-volunteer team. The last two years has seen us switch from hydrogen peroxide-based propellants to liquid oxygen alcohols, and our vehicle performance reached that required for space flight. At the end of our peroxide development, we were flying vehicles with over a 2,000 pound gross liftoff weight, but when we moved into the new territory of liquid oxygen engines, we scaled back to a smaller 500 pound vehicle just to get our bearings again. While our development process was planned to scale directly from the original XPRIZE Cup vehicle to the first vertical dragster, the announcement of the XPRIZE Cup and now the Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge has caused us to short-circuit our development process and quickly put together our quad family of vehicles targeted specifically for the contest. I constantly find myself challenged by the various things that the, the engineers throw at me. I've really had to push my skills to get the best welds that we can possibly get. At times it's very frustrating, but I like the challenge. With only six months from the announcement of the Lunar Lander Challenge to the time where we actually had to compete, we did succeed in building two vehicles capable of flying for it, but the lack of testing time left us with vehicles that could not land as well as they could fly. However, we were the only team that was even remotely close. With all the testing that we had done prior to that and not being able to do any free flights, actually the qualification flight, when it took off on its own for the first time, and it was just a, a incredible thrill of accomplishment. That's just been that way all the time since we began Armadillo Aerospace. Our stuff actually gets up in the air and, and flies. That was the first time we ever flew Pixel off the tethers, and I didn't really know what to expect in terms of trying to videotape it. But when it moved off the pad and started kicking up all that dust, it looked like a tornado was coming down towards the landing pad. Towards the end of the flight, there was so much dust, none of us could really see it. The very first real flight we did uh, as, as the first leg of the Level 1 mission, uh, Pixel kind of takes up, hovers at about five or six meters for a few seconds, and then just takes off. I had no idea that 50 meters was so high. I thought it was never going to stop. It was like, yeah, to the moon, Alice. Once I was settled with the fact the vehicle wasn't going to fall out of the sky and it began to approach our position, my first impression was to turn around and run. I noticed that Tommy, who was 100 yards off to the right of where I was stationed, had had the exact same impression <laughs> as we had both decided to turn around and run, stopping short about 10 yards later to look back at the vehicle to make sure we were watching the whole thing live. It was amazing enough to see Pixel lift off the ground and fly for the first time. That was just all inspiring. But to see that vehicle coming my way was almost scary. It was amazing. But at the end of that, it started drifting towards the, uh, the line where I would have to terminate the flight. My job at XCUP 2006 was one of sky screen with our remote termination box to keep our vehicle from drifting into harm's way. Needless to say, I didn't want to be the one to do that. It really uh, got the blood a pumping, but fortunately John brought it back into the path where I didn't have to do that. Watching the vehicle lift off in free flight and being underneath it and being so closely involved with it, the impact that it had on me, it was astonishing. I feel that maybe in some small way or even in some large way will change the perspective of what it takes to really go to space.
The addition of a modern CNC mill to our shop has allowed us to move seamlessly from research and development to production runs. Our current work with modularizing our propulsion systems will be the scalable foundation that takes us through commercial operations and eventually all the way to orbit. The modular systems allow us to scale both our boosters and upper stages so that we can handle any size payload that's necessary and any performance delta that's required through staging if necessary. We have the vehicle propulsion capability now to go through manned suborbital flights. We have the experimental permits, we have the insurance, uh, we really only have to get through the actual flight tests now to begin carrying people into space. I'm not going to be one of the first test pilots, but I do think I'm going to be one of those people that can say they were one of the first thousand people into space. Do I want to go to space? Is the Pope Catholic? Uh. I've been on one of our rockets, and it was a little scary, but it was a wonderful uh, experience. And that was just for a little six-second flight, you know, three feet above the ground. Uh, I can't wait for the chance to get on one of our rockets and go up into space. Do I want to go to space? No, I'm, I don't like flying at all, but I'm going to give my ticket to somebody else. That would be the greatest thrill of all, to see a map of the United States full scale. <laughs>